Alrighty, so before I give you guys a full walkthrough of what the new dust collection system looks like, I wanted to show you guys a little bit of how well it works. What you saw at the beginning with all of those chips all over my planer was about six or seven cutting boards, and I was able to just run five more cutting boards through getting them all planed down to the correct thickness. And uh, this is what it looks like now. And honestly, I am super, super impressed with how good it looks. Um, there's barely any chips. Just even using it, I noticed there's a lot less chips coming out the front. So whatever the airflow is, is coming off the uh, dust collector that I inherited through the four inch pipe is far higher than what my planer was able to just push through the cyclone on its own, which kind of makes sense, but I didn't know with the entire system how things were gonna go in the end. But overall, definitely a vast improvement. I'm really excited to get this on the rest of my tools and I think it's gonna help to keep the shop a lot cleaner so I don't have to go through and just do a lot of vacuuming every single time. But all right, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through some of the design decisions that I made, why I chose to do it the way that I did it and see if you wanna integrate any of these into your desk collection design as well. All right, here we go. Alrighty, so first up what I wanted to do, the most obvious design choice was whether or not to use metal or PVC. So what are the primary reasons for going with PVC? One, it is a lot cheaper than going with metal ducting. Um, two, it's more available than metal ducting in a lot of different places, and it is also easier to work with. Now the downside that you will see all over online, sorry, it's really windy here today, so you may hear the uh, uh, roof banging around a little bit. But the reason why, uh, uh, people get worried about PVC is because of static buildup and static buildup can be an issue as you're going through this but the more research I did the more people said yeah your risk of an explosion from uh, static discharge in your dust line is pretty small especially when you're on a hobbyist scale if you go up to a more commercial scale it may be more of an issue but I decided it was fine I'm not really all that worried about the risk and I can always try to uh, make it more static proof later especially because this was much much cheaper than trying to go with metal all the way through and this was supposed to be better than just my shop vac and uh, cyclone. Alrighty, the second thing to take note of, and you'll see this throughout the entire design, is I never do a 90 degree bend in one single turn. You can see here I've got straight, and then I've got a 45 coming out, and then a 45 coming over to get the 90. Now, because I've got a 45 on the Y, it's the only direction I could go, but rather than trying to come up in here and just do a 90 straight off, um, you use 45s because you want this to be as slow and gently sloping as possible so that you get um, the smallest pressure drop possible around the corners, because that will keep the maximum flow coming through here all the way to the end of your runs all the way at the end and it just helps to increase your flow all the way through. Number three on each one of my connections I decided to go with duct tape instead of the HVAC metal tape. Now from everything that I could see online the primary reason for using metal HVAC tape was that it's going to last a lot longer so if you're going to be in your house for 10-20 years then you're probably going to want to go with the metal tape because it seals really well and it's really resilient to temperature changes and they needed that for duct tape because well, ducting tape, the aluminum duct tape, um, because you're gonna see a lot of temperature changes with hot air and air conditioned air coming through there, and those temperature changes can cause the adhesive to fail on duct tape, but because I'm just pulling room temperature air through here all the time, and I just needed a good seal all the way around, not a phenomenal seal, I figured the duct tape was gonna be fine, and frankly, if it fails, I can always go back and do something better with that later. As a note on the PVC, when you're looking for PVC, you're gonna find a couple of different varieties. One is gonna be Schedule 40, and that's meant for holding pressure, and then you're gonna find the kind of piping that I got which is DWV drain waste and vent. Um, but your DWV pipe is gonna be a lot cheaper because the walls are really thin compared here on second. So the walls on your DW, DWV pipe are a lot thinner than what you're gonna get on schedule 40 and that's because they're literally just made for draining things away, no pressure or anything. But you can get a 10 footer at least where I am for about 18 bucks a piece and that is pretty cheap because I only needed five of these to do all of the runs that I have in my shop. Alrighty, next up, everywhere that I had blast gates going to each one of my tools, and actually a note on blast gates is that you should ideally have a blast gate in front of every tool. So I've got one there, one there, and I've got one over my workbench, and then up here on my tool cluster, I've got a whole bunch of them coming out, one for every tool and one for every connection. I'm not fully done connecting it yet, but I'll talk about that more in a second. But you wanna get a blast gate 
all the way through there and then once on your major run. So I've got one for this one right here. And then I didn't put one for this upper run because I figured with all of these clothes to be fine. Although now that I'm thinking about it, I probably should have put another one right about there so that when I'm using these lines, I don't have to try and pull down pressure on all of these over here. So I may add another blast gate in right at the top there. I hadn't even thought about that, but you should have one in front of every major run because it consolidates the space that your dust collector actually needs to pull from. Okay, now that I got myself thoroughly distracted explaining why you wanna put your blast gates where you want them. Um, at every single one of the blast gates, I threw a bead of silicone all the way around, and then I threw some of these self-tapping screws in here, and I was concerned about these cracking the PVCs, these cracking the PVC, but it actually did a really great job because it taps a hole for itself as it goes through, so it creates that um, opening so that you don't need to tap the hole before you go in and put the screw, and I had none of these crack on me all the way through. They went through the PVC, through these guys just fine, um, and you'll see in the time lapse, if you look back carefully, that I I was using duct tape all the way around. What I should have done is just glue these, screw them, because then when I came back later, the blast gates did not adhere very well to the silicone. And so a couple of them, when I went to put these in, they actually just de-adhered from the silicone. And so I had to re-silicone on the bottom side and then put these in. And I could have saved myself some headache by just doing the silicone and then immediately putting the screws in so that where it was fastened is where the silicone set. Alrighty, so the next note, when you're using this flex hosing right here, you want to shorten these as much as possible because all of the ridges that are on the inside of this cause a massive pressure drop all the way across that flow. And you want to try and again, reduce that pressure drop as much as possible when you're using it. So just to each one of the tools and just where you need a little bit of flexibility to try and pull your tool out or move your tool around, that's about as much flex hose as you want to give yourself. So I've got just enough for my planer. I can pull it out a little bit further if I need it, but it's not just spooled up and sitting on the ground over here waiting to be used. Okay, so now the thought process on my tool cluster, the tool cluster itself is supposed to have my miter saw, the planer, the table saw, and the band saw. Now, not all of these are gonna be in use at the same time, and so every single one of these offshoots has a blast gate on it. Um, if you can find a way to do it where you can close off a whole bunch of them at once, that would be great. It's just, it didn't really work well, primarily because coming off the bottom here, I wanted to have the feed for the bottom of my uh, table saw, but then I also have an open one up here that I'm eventually gonna use to hang something down so that I've got some top level dust collection. I just need to find the right hood for my table saw itself or figure out the best way to try and collect dust right at the source because you're gonna get a lot of it that goes into the cabinet itself but you're also gonna get a decent amount that comes off the top of the blade and is coming on the outside. So if I can find a good guard or if I can find um, just an overall hood that I can put over the top of this to use, I'd like to try and find that. But I wanted to make sure I had plumbed dust collection ready for that. Um, yeah, and then you basically just have it coming off for every tool. My miter saw as well is also gonna get a uh, shroud around it because right now you can see it through here. It just has the small little like two and a quarter inch or one inch standard dust collection. But what I wanna do is build a small little table back here that has kind of a dust collection port on the bottom and then build a shroud around it so it's pulling a lot of air from the front and around because even with that, there's still a ton of chips that bind up or that get piled up on the table around here and I wanna try and get rid of those. Okay, so maybe this is a question you have and maybe it's not, but one of the things that I realized when I put my cluster together right here is that if I just put this all the way up at the ceiling without this spacer in here, it was gonna be too tall. Same thing with over my workbench over here, that little spacer that you can see here, I added him in at the end because one of these all the way up at the ceiling, well, I can't reach it to open up the blast gate. And so you wanna go through, measure how high you can reach, and then you wanna make sure that you put a spacer long enough in there that you can actually reach these. And that's why this guy looks like he's off kilter as well, because I wanted to get him as high up as possible, but I rotated the blast gate down around a little bit so I can grab it a little bit easier uh, when I need to open it up. Okay, and then last but not least, uh, sorry for the pile of boxes. This is literally everything that everything was packaged in, so I'm getting ready to uh, get rid of those by starting my fire with them, but the dust collector itself. So I inherited this dust collector. It is not the best dust collector in the world, but you can't really beat free and it does pull a lot of air through it. I think it's like a one and a half horsepower. Um, so it's pretty decent, all things considered. Um, but you will find there's a lot more research being done on fine particles in these five micron bags. And I don't even know if this is a five micron bag, but these bags are generally five micron bags, which means that they will let five, um, anything below five micron particles out. Um, 
These are not the best dust collectors to have because these actually just puff a bunch of dust out. And when you empty this or when you bring it back or when you start it up, you'll actually see this like puff of dust coming out of it. And those are all the particles under five microns being released from it or coming out. Plus they don't seal very well around the edge right here. So what you can do is put a canister collector on top and that'll go a lot lower because you get way more surface area with the pleats. But you wanna get a dust collector that you can use because this is better than nothing. However, at some point I will be upgrading this to a much better system with a cyclone or a canister filter or something. So stay tuned for that. I'm gonna be going through and doing an entire rebuild of this, but for now it powers my entire dust collection system. And I am so excited with how this thing turned out and just seeing how well it worked with the planer. I am super stoked about getting this working on the rest of my tools. So uh, yeah. Alrighty, thank you guys for joining me today. Now this was a massive, massive build and this is a huge improvement for my shop and everybody's situation is slightly different. So if you have any questions about your dust collection setup and kind of what you want to do for your dust collection setup, go ahead and leave it in the comment section down below. I'll also do a quick summary on what it cost me to do this, just materials all in, because the uh, fittings do start to get expensive, but it's way less expensive than if you're going to go through and do the PowerTech method. PowerTech, the guys that made my blast gates and a couple of my adapters, they do have a system for hooking everything together, but it's like $10 per adapter, and so it can get really expensive expensive really fast. So I'll go ahead and put that summary down in the description below. But if you guys have any questions at all about your dust collection setup or why I did things the way that I did, um, go ahead and leave it in the comment section down below and I can answer as many questions as I can if it's something that I did, something that I considered. And I may have forgotten something in this video as I was going through and explaining it because there was a lot of considerations that were taken in order to put this together. But that's not to scare you away from doing dust collection of your own because it's really, really great for quality of life. I mean, on again, just looking at how well it cleared out my planer and how few, how many fewer chips I have coming off my planer, I'm gonna have to clean my shop a whole lot less because I'm not just getting chips flying everywhere. So with a cleaner shop, it means I get to work more rather than cleaning more, and that is always a recipe for a much happier me. So thank you guys tons. I really appreciate you sticking around, especially if you're still here this long in the video. So thank you guys. I do really appreciate having you around. If you do like the kind of videos we're producing here at Northwest Craftsman, we'd really appreciate a thumbs up on this video to like the video. Um, all of your interactions in the comment section down below are really great and healthy for the channel, not only because it helps us in the algorithm and all that jazz, but because I really enjoy interacting with you guys. Just recently had somebody who's trying to brainstorm how to do a project and he shot me an email through our about page and we're kind of going back and forth on how we think he ought to do it. And I really enjoy doing stuff like that because it allows me to sharpen my mental chisel, so to speak. Sorry for the bad dad joke, but it allows me to sharpen my thinking process as well and think about things in a slightly different way. And you guys have phenomenal ideas when I'm doing something weird or dumb. So this is always a constant learning process for me and it all comes through your guys' involvement. So thank you guys for being around. You are really what makes the channel awesome. Uh, hope you have a great one. Happy woodworking. Bye.